Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Jen and as always, thank you so much for being here. Last week, I finally announced to you guys that I'm pregnant. As of right now, I'm almost 14 weeks. I should probably throw a card up here. I'll do that for the video announcing that I was pregnant. In this video, I'm going to go day by day and tell you what symptoms I was having that I could be pregnant before my positive pregnancy test. And I'm also gonna tell you about something that I think is really cool and that is that my service dog, Buddy, actually alerted me that I was pregnant about a week before that positive pregnancy test. I mentioned briefly before that we had a miscarriage of our first. So this is our second pregnancy and hopefully our first baby. But the reason that that is relevant is that the service dog did alert to both pregnancies and he was spot on both times. You probably think I'm a little bit crazy saying that and at the time I was really skeptical. I wasn't taking it as like, a set in stone sign that I was pregnant or anything, but the only two times that he has done this have been within the week before I got a positive pregnancy test. So he's two for two and I think it's pretty incredible. Um, all right, I think, yeah, let's do it. I even got a calendar to make it, oh. I even got a calendar to make it easier for you. All right, starting at the beginning. I was on birth control until about four months before I got pregnant with baby number one. When I got off of birth control, something I was really dreading was tracking my cycles and knowing that they were gonna be irregular getting off the pill. I was really not looking forward to them sneaking up on me. Honestly, even if they were regular, I just really wasn't about it because I hate planning. I'm not much of a planner, so when we decided to get me off birth control so that we could start trying, I invested in my best friend, the Ava bracelet. Basically, it's a fertility bracelet that you wear at night and it tracks your cycle for you. It tells you when you're fertile, it tells you when you ovulate, and it predicts when your period is gonna come, and in my experience, it has been completely accurate. I haven't talked about it on here yet, but I will throw my affiliate link down in the description if you're interested in going and checking it out. I might talk about it more later, but I wanted to bring it up in this video because this bracelet is how I know what day I ovulated on. Most of the time you sort of have a window of when you think you ovulated, but I definitely know what day I ovulated because I was being very tracked while I slept. Going to our handy dandy calendar, April 5th is the day that I ovulated, so I'm going to put that down. I'm breaking all the camera rules. You're not supposed to be sleeveless and like have your arm, but like, yeah, check out. It's the size of my head, screw off. I'm gonna try to write it really big so you can see it. Ovulation day, Palm Sunday. That's nice. If you've never tried to conceive before, you might not know that much about periods and cycles and when you ovulate and when you can take a test and all that stuff. So I'll try to throw all that in and I'm sorry if I forget to mention something, but ovulation day happened here and generally speaking your period is due 14 days after you ovulate so i'm going to throw on the 19th that that is the date of my expected period period due can you even see it there period due so when you're trying to conceive if this is ovulation day your most fertile days are going to be the few days before ovulation day and then also ovulation day again that's hard to pinpoint if you're not tracking it but i was tracking it so i knew when it would be you do the dirty sperm makes egg and then six to 12 days after you ovulate is roughly when you're going to implant so on my timeline anywhere from like the 10th to like the 15th is when I could expect to implant. 10 would be on the earlier side, but of course the sperm meets the egg well before that and it starts growing and dividing and moving through the fallopian tube, eventually gets to the uterus around day six, but there is some magic happening even before that implantation step. So I'm just gonna kinda like underline, I guess I'll underline the 10th is the earliest that I could have implanted. So that's six DPO, DPO is, de DPO is days past ovulation. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then it takes an additional three to four days for the HCG to show up in your urine for your positive pregnancy test to happen. In between ovulation day and your period being due is called the two week wait because usually you have to wait until your period, roughly until your period is due in order to get a positive pregnancy test. So Buddy's alert 
was on April 9th, which is only four days past ovulation, right here. Alert, unbelievable. And I'm just going to fast forward and let you know that I got my positive pregnancy test on April 15th. Happy tax day. I'm just gonna put a big old plus. Big old plus. And that was four days before my missed period, which is crazy because all I had was those little cheapy tests that you buy on Amazon. They're like 50 for $10 or something. I'll link those below too. I was not using expensive tests, so it's pretty amazing. This day I actually got what I call squinters. I think a lot of people call them squinters. I really had to look. I used the color correction on my phone to try to get a more, um, like a darker looking line just to see if I could see it there. Any little bit of line is a positive test. So like, I was really looking hard that day. I think most women would have seen the positive on the 16th if they weren't being as crazy as me. <laughs> so um, the 16th is, is the day that my positive was like super definitive right there. And it's kind of crazy looking at it like this on the calendar because like I said, Buddy alerted me like a week, almost a week before my positive pregnancy test. Absolutely nuts. Buddy giving me a pregnancy alert was the very first sign that I had that things were getting moving. Thumbs up this video if a service dog pregnancy alert is literally the coolest thing ever because I sort of think it is. Hi, this is Jen from the future. I just finished recording and I realized that I never told you exactly what Buddy did to alert me, so that was like a really important thing to skip. So I'm gonna tell you about it now. Buddy is a service dog for all sorts of different stuff, and so he does have alerts that he does. They're usually licks or nudges. Nudging being like with his nose, he pushes on stuff. So what Buddy did to alert me with this pregnancy is he got really close, really, really close, and then he was like sniffing. He got, he got all sniffy about it. And then he looked up at me, and then he went back to my stomach, and he just stuck his nose on my stomach. Like, he was trying to boop the baby itself. Like, he was really trying to get in there. He was really trying to smell, and then he got really nudgy at it, and was looking up at me like, hey, are you catching this? Are you picking up what I'm putting down, mom? He was being quite forward about it. It was a very undeniable sensation of just, Jab, jab, jab. Again, not normal behavior. This is the second time he's ever done it to me. The only other time was when I was pregnant. Pretty incredible. And I thought it was really sweet that he was watching me also to make sure that I was getting the memo because he's used to alerting me and sometimes I don't realize that he alerted me. Like if I'm at the grocery store and I'm looking at stuff, I'm not paying attention, he might nudge me gently and I might not notice so then he has to get more persistent. He kind of did the same thing, like he thought that it was really important for me to know about this and he was very persistent and he was very like attentive about whether or not I was noticing that he was doing it. I don't think that the pregnancy alert was him trying to tell me specifically that I was pregnant, like that he somehow knew that I didn't know. I don't know. Since then there have been a few more times that he has booped me on the stomach throughout the pregnancy. I don't know what he was booping for or if he was just saying hi to the baby. A lot of Buddy's alerting is cardiac alerting, so he might also be picking up on the baby's heartbeat sometimes. The baby's heartbeat is really fast. It's like 160 beats per minute, and that's normal. Baby's heartbeats are supposed to be very fast when they're in the womb, but Buddy doesn't know that, and he's used to alerting me to my tachycardia, so part of me is wondering if he's booping the baby. Maybe if I get an adrenaline rush and the baby gets an adrenaline rush, does the baby get an adrenaline rush if I get an adrenaline rush? Maybe the baby's heartbeat gets faster and he alerts to that, or maybe there's sometimes that the baby's heart is beating harder and he's noticing that. I do think it's safe to say that he is observing that there is another heartbeat in there. I don't know, so I don't know what else he's booping about. Um, anyway, that's it from the future. Let's get back to what I was recording before. All right, so back on the timeline. It's April 9th, Buddy alerts me. And then that night, Buddy spent the night with me. 
which he doesn't do because it's really hot upstairs. He likes to be downstairs and sleep on the slab. We have like laminate, but our foundation is a concrete slab. So it stays nice and cool on the floor and he likes to be down there. So he spent the night with me. I put a little heart here that he spent the night and he spent the night with me again on Friday night. So I was like, that's weird, but he's acting very attached, which is not like him. On the 10th, I was ravenously hungry. That is what I texted my best friend. Hunger. Hunger. The other symptom that I had on the 10th, or the night between the 9th and the 10th, I had my implantation dip. That's a dip in temperature. This is gonna be a little bit of a tangent, so buckle up. As I mentioned, the Ava bracelet was tracking my cycles. I don't know if I mentioned it specifically before, but you wear it overnight, it measures all of your signs, and then you charge it during the day. You don't wear it during the day, so nobody has any idea that you're doing this for your cycles. And then at night before bed, you just put it back on, and it syncs with an app on your phone. It's all super easy. Obviously, I would never say that it was fortunate that I lost the first baby, but one silver lining that came out of it is when I was pregnant with this baby, I knew a little bit more of what to expect from a pregnant cycle versus a non-pregnant cycle because I had been through one of each before. So, the Ava bracelet was tracking me, and on my non-pregnant cycles after ovulation, one of the ways that you can confirm that ovulation actually occurred is your temperature starts to rise every night. Up, 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 up. And on my pregnant cycle with the first baby, I had an implantation dip. An implantation dip is where your temperature dips for a day or a few days before it continues to rise back up. I have no idea physiologically why this happens. I just know that I am one of the women that it happens to. So non-pregnant cycles, up, 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 up. When I got pregnant with the first baby, I had an implantation dip that was down, up, down deeper, and then continued to skyrocket on the 10th, I had that first dip down. I'm going to write dip. And since the dip was like a down up down on consecutive nights, I'm just gonna put like dip 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 across this. Ava, on my wrist it dipping ice. You guys listen to Cardi? Let me know if you listen to Cardi down below. You can be a nice wholesome person and also listen to Cardi, that's fine. All right, so I added temperature dip, dip, dip. And again, the little hearts are that buddy slept with me because he's so sweet. On the 11th, so six DPO and nine days before my missed period, correct me, I'm not gonna count right now. I slept in that day and I also had this thing that happened in the morning where I woke up super hungry and then very suddenly felt like I had to puke. So. Sleeping in, very tired, and then also sudden nausea. Z's for sleeping and nausea. I don't even want to write nausea. The nausea still hasn't subsided, by the way. It's been almost three months straight of nausea. It's just stupid. And the same thing happened on the 12th, so I am going to put that too. All right, Z's because I slept in, and then I also had nausea that day, my temperature dip finished. I slept in again on the 12th, I had nausea again. Sleeping in doesn't seem like a big, oh, sorry, I kicked the tripod, are you guys okay? Sleeping in doesn't seem like a big deal, I know, but I don't sleep in, I just don't. And also, we don't have curtains, so the sun comes up, I'm up. It just, that's how it is. But those two days I slept in, and I was also just ravenously hungry. From that first pregnant cycle, I knew that after my dip rise deeper dip, two days later was when my pregnancy test became positive. So being the impatient person that I am, you know what, this whole time, I should have been on this side because I'm right-handed. I could just hold it, I'm gonna switch sides. This side of the bed isn't as cute, but whatever. Okay. Based on that, if I was following exactly the same pattern, which obviously there's no guarantee that I would. I'm new to this. I would get my positive pregnancy test on the 14th. So of course I tried that day and it was negative. Boo. But of course the very next day I got my positive. One thing I forgot to mention, I just went back and checked my notes. Something I've totally forgot to mention is the migraine that I had on the 12th was super mild. 
mild migraine. I had already stopped taking all of my prescriptions and started on a prenatal many months before I was trying. And because I knew I might be pregnant or that I would be pregnant soon, hopefully, I hadn't been taking abortives or anything when I was getting a migraine. And the migraine that I got on the 12th was just exceptionally mild. Like, I don't think I would have taken anything for it anyway. My doctors mentioned that migraines can get more mild when you're pregnant, so I took that as a good sign that I could be. A lot of women's migraines are hormonal, so the swings, the ups and downs throughout the menstrual cycle can be really difficult on them. And if you do have menstrual related migraines, then one of the awesome things about being pregnant is that your hormones stay stable. I don't wanna call it stable, but they stay very elevated. And so you don't have those big crashes that can amplify migraines in some women. How long has my bra strap been showing? Oh my gosh, and it's twisted too. I've had a twisted bra strap showing. This video is a mess. But I can't redo it because I already wrote all over the calendar, so. So on the 12th, I noted that my migraine was mild, and on the 13th, I noted the same thing, that the migraine was mild. Okay, on the 13th, I also got some cramps. I had really some mild cramps, and on the 14th, I had some cramps. Now what's odd about that is usually if you get cramps, they say that it's implantation cramps, but as we know from my temperature from the Ava bracelet, I implanted somewhere back here, and that's further evidenced by the fact that my positive pregnancy test happened on the 15th. It takes three to four days for the chemical to build up enough for you to get your positive, I cannot say this sentence. It takes three to four days for the chemical HCG, it takes three to four days for the chemical HCG to build up in your urine enough for your test to come positive when you take your at-home test, and I was not using a highly sensitive test. I was using just a normal one. So we can assume that I was at least three days past implantation at this point. So one, two, three, probably four, maybe four, maybe four, maybe three. So the fact that the cramps came after implantation for me is a little weird but maybe after implantation there's some burrowing that happens or maybe it's just spontaneous cramps maybe my uterus was already starting to loosen up and get ready to grow i don't really know i i haven't asked it this was really discouraging because the test was negative and i also had cramps so i was pretty sure that my period was coming so obviously i was thrilled on the 15th that i got my squinter this Positive was 10 days past ovulation. And when I looked it up online, about two thirds of women who are pregnant end up testing positive at 10 DPO. It just takes a lot of time for the HCG to build up in your urine. It doubles every 24 to 48 hours. So each day that passes, you get a little bit more likely that your positive test is going to pop up. Before that, you get false negative tests. At 10 DPO, which is when my squinter happened, you have about a 66% chance of your positive showing up. Um, as I mentioned before, I think most women probably would have noticed it at the 16th. That would have been 11 DPO for me, and that's an 80% chance of getting your positive at 11, 11 DPO. So there's my timeline. I got my positive four days before my missed period at 10 days past ovulation. Buddy wins, as always. Guys, do you see this? I'm getting convulsions. Only in my neck. It's very uncomfortable. All right, I think it stopped. Well, that's it for this video. That's everything that happened from when I ovulated up until I got my positive pregnancy test. The two biggest video requests that I've been getting ever since I announced that I was pregnant is how is Buddy reacting to the pregnancy? and how have my migraines and my POTS changed through the pregnancy. So I'm currently leaning towards doing something like that soon. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. And actually like really thank you for being here. In the last week I've gained over 100 subscribers and I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for being here. You guys have no idea how much the support means to me. I can't believe that you take the time out of your day to hang out with me on here, get to know me. I love getting to know you guys. I love all of the interaction that you guys give me in the comments. I just feel really fortunate that I have this platform to share my story, raise awareness for the things that I'm going through because so many people are going through the same things and there wasn't something like this for me when I was first 
getting my migraines. And of course all the other stuff, but it started as just migraines. So welcome to the new subscribers. I'm so happy that you guys are here. And I, I hope that you continue to enjoy my content. I hope that you guys have a lot of fun here. Did I just repeat myself like eight times because I feel like I did? But I don't care. Thank you. I love you. I'm gonna get going. It's time for this baby mama to take a nap. <laughs> It's a lot of work building a human, but I really appreciate you joining me today and listening to my story. Have an awesome weekend. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and I will see you again next week. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.